H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. We ensure that system dot out dot print one. It's going to print a message. Prints message in a console. Okay. Then uh, returning a value from a method. So like live at we we can just use the use the data type use use the required data type before the method name. So if you mention void it's it's not going to return. It is not going to return any anything, nothing. Okay. If you mention integer, it's going to give integer value. And here we have to use a word called return. So remember, we have to use a word called return over here to return any value here. Okay. Now uh, we'll continue with this next one, type casting. Type casting means uh, we can convert uh, one data type to the other data type. Okay. Say we have information in one variable, and uh, that information can be converted into you, uh, can can be converted into uh, the other type. Uh, for example, say uh, here we have uh, an integer value like this. Say integer, not integer. Let me say a string. Mm. Uh, you can get confused with this one. <laughs> okay. Let's say I have information like uh, a float. See here, float four. Okay. Float. This is a float information, and I want I want to convert into an integer. Okay. Yes. Uh, there are some limitations uh, if you want to convert uh, one data type to the other data type. Okay, if you want to convert one data type to the other, there are some set of limitations. Uh, however, uh, if you want to convert your float to integer, uh, the procedure will be like this. Say float. Here I said uh, no. Say let me say float b integer a. Okay. Now here, uh, I can say a int b. Okay, so this is like I can convert uh, the float information, the float information, into the in, into the integer information. At least try to understand this concept. Because uh, this kind of concepts uh, we use sometimes in uh, Selenium. Mm, let me take uh, one more class here. Let me close all these things. Okay. Here, uh, what I'm saying here, in TA, float B. Okay. Um, if I uh, say A equal to, uh, not A equal to, B, say B equal to, say 5 and here see here uh, a equal to 
int of v. So this is called as type casting. I mean, uh, in the b variable, actually, we have a float information. Okay, we are trying to convert into integer information. This process is called as type casting. Okay, and in a similar way, sometimes uh, you know we will have the information in a string. Okay, uh, you don't agree here. Say string uh, in this. Say that was a price. Okay. Now everyone up here. Now if you look at this number, this one two three four, one two three four, looking at them as same. Okay, but both are different. This is a string. This is an integer. Everyone try to understand here. This is a string because we have mentioned a number within the double quotation. When you mention uh, something in the double quotation, that is a, that is called as a, a string. Okay, this is called a string, and this is called as an integer. Okay, so however, I I just want to show the difference over here. However, see if I want to convert this information, this information into uh, integer, is it the I just want to forget one method here. There will be a method here. No, it's not a Give it. Uh, let me check in the. Uh, we have used this kind of thing in the. Previous frameworks here. Give me a minute. Yeah, this one. Okay, integer pass and okay. Or sent off. We have to mention this string. Okay. Now I can change it. I can send it to variable. Now here, like uh, here, we are converting a string information into uh, we are converting a string information into a variable uh, integer information. Okay. So these these things we use sometimes, as you observe here, uh, we, were, we were used in one of the situation here. Okay. Probably uh, this is not the right time to get into the more details. Okay. Just try to uh, try to understand that type casting. I think we are going to practically apply this type testing in the coming classes. Okay, simple. Uh, just remember that uh, converting one data type to the other data type. Okay. Next method overloading. If you all observe here, uh, here in Java, here what I said, if you look at this behavior, I said uh, for this path, I said move forward, move backward, start, stop. Okay, now let me say, say move forward, like uh, let me say by a manual transmission. 
Okay, just example. Okay. Now let me say move forward. After transmission. Now, actually, why I am again uh, redefining this? If you closely look at this, seems to be. I mean, the purpose is same. It might be a manual. Uh, it might be a manual uh, manual transmission, or it might be a automatic transmission. In both the cases, car will move forward. Right? It's very simple. You are. It might be you are using an auto transmission mechanism. Are a manual a manual transmission mechanism. If it is a move forward, means car has to move forward. Simple. Okay. I hope everyone is following this. So, uh, in either cases, you are move moving forward. Only the uh, the mechanism is different, right? Moving forward here also it is moving forward. It is also moving moving forward. Only the mechanism, the driving mechanism is different. So technically here in Java, I can say this is a this is move forward this is a move, move forward method names are same everyone try to observe here method names are uh, different uh, method method names are same but the uh, input parameters may vary and the type of uh, returning data type may vary what i mean to say here uh, i would have say some java name here give me a minute Uh, yeah, instead of type testing, I am saying Java file. Yes. Okay. Now see here. Uh, this is type testing. The Now we are going to understand public void uh, see here what I am saying here move forward ok this is what uh, we have created now what I am saying here I can create one more method say public Void move forward here I am passing some parameters to this particular method however if you closely observe here here we have move forward here also the name of the method is move forward now I call this is a method overloading ok now observe here I can also create a method like this public int I'm just writing something here okay now see here now if you close the mirror this method name this method name this method name also same so here our intention is that method names are same but the purposes are different okay so here i'm passing a value here here i'm not a here i'm not passing a value and here uh, i'm returning a data type whereas here both of them are void so it means i mean to say here method names may be a uh, method names will be same okay but uh, here the purpose the driving mechanism will be different here okay now uh, we yesterday in, uh, in our session we have discussed system dot out dot print and right now the, one of the best example for the method overloading is this everyone up here no actually when I when I keep dot here it is going to list down on the related methods over here okay yesterday itself I have uh, we have created some instances we were uh, understood that right here I mentioned system dot out dot println. Now if you closely observe all these uh, methods, can you all observe these methods? 
What is the method name? Method name is same. Printalan, 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 Printalan. All the method names are same. But the difference is here, for this first Printalan, it is saying void. Void means we don't need to pass any value and it is going to give nothing. The output is nothing. And here, uh, uh, see it, Boolean. Here we are passing a Boolean value here. Printalan, Boolean. And Printalan, character. Printalan, array of characters. Printalan, double. If you remember I said, you know, there will be uh, other than the uh, what we have discussed with data types, like uh, short int, long int, yes, like that there is something called double, float, integer, long, object, string. Can you all of these things? Method name is same. Printlen is the same. But the, the input parameter is varying. Okay. This is one of the best examples for the method overloading. Okay. I will show this practically. Uh, we have used this method overloading in one of the concepts. Okay, so before before that selenium, I want to make sure uh, you know you listen to these words, and uh, I'm trying to give a basic idea on these things. However, uh, we'll we'll have a practical approach on this. Okay. Yeah. Now let me move on here. The constructor. Uh, before we go to the constructor, uh, let us see if we have any questions over here. Method overloading, uh, method names, method names will be seen. Uh, input parameters are returning data type memory. Okay. Best example system dot out dot print uh, ln. So basically, you can pass a null value. Okay. Here, see here. I can pass say if I say five. What is the five? It is an integer. And I can pass something like this. Fine. It is a string. This is a string. This is an integer. Okay. And I can say true. True is a boolean information. Okay. So here for each method, I'm uh, I'm passing uh, different different uh, types of information, but still it is going to print. It means in this uh, uh, this system that our dot is a within the uh, Java. Uh, this is one of the class. System is one of the class here with, uh, which is being there with the Java. Okay, it's like a, one of the built-in uh, class. Okay, for that it has some set of methods. So if you go into the technical details of the system, it will have some tech. Uh, it will have separate separate methods. Okay, print -a -line, print -a -line of uh, uh, one with <coughs> one with null value, one with the integer, one with the uh, string. Okay, now let us move on. constructors yeah I know here we have been creating the classes right here uh, we have created a Java file eBay search this calculator okay we have created some set of classes here okay and we know uh, each uh, class will contain uh, methods and uh, class variables right but by default When we create a class, by default, there will be a method with the same name of class. Or, uh, what I can say, it's not like when we create, basically when we try to execute, within the background it is going to create.
Now everyone try to understand this statement. When we are trying to execute our uh, class, when we are trying to execute a class, within the background, there will be default, uh, there will be a method with the same name of the class. Okay, say if the, if the class name is, say, ABC, and while uh, executing it, there will be one method called ABC, and which will be hidden, which will not be shown to us. Okay, uh, basically, it's, a, it's all like a, the background mechanism of Java. Okay, there is something called Java Runtime Environment. So, uh, basically, by using JRE, Java Runtime Environment, we execute our scripts. Okay, so when we execute, basically, it is going to create a byte, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, this class will be converted into a byte code. In that byte code, it is going to have. However, in simple terms, when we try to execute our class, by default, there will be a method with the same name of the class. Okay, that is called as a default constructor. This is called as a default constructor. And basically, we have been creating the instances, right? Even if you remember here, in imp logic, I said creating the instances can be done in two ways. I mentioned one of the way. Okay. This is the first way. Basically, when we create the instance, uh, internally, I am talking about the background logic, internally the other way. Because uh, as I said just now, the class name uh, is, is equal to the method name. So basically here we are creating the instance, right? So basically here indirectly we are referring the um, the method which is the name of the class. Okay. Here I mentioned class name, but basically within internally it is basically refer it is going to refer the default method uh, that is uh, the name of the class. Okay. What I'm saying here. So what is the class name here? What is the class name? Just post in the chat box. What is the class name of this? Java file, right? What is the class name? It is Java file. Now see here, what I am saying here, even though you create like this, even though you mention, what happened? Now see here, even though you create a, even though you create a method like this, public Java file, okay? A class name is Java file. Even over here, this is a class name. Okay. Even though you create it or you don't create it, I mean, I mean to say this one. I'm exclu I'm uh, no, I'm exclusively writing it. Even though you even though you don't write it in the background of the Java while executing, this is going to be created. Okay. So what is the class name? Java file, and method name is Java file. Okay. So this is called as a default constructor. Okay, this is called as the default constructor. Okay, even you create it, even you don't create it in the background of Java while executing, this is going to be created. Okay. Now what I'm saying here, now public Java file. Okay, here uh, I can give some values. Say int a or int b, how many parameters that you want, you can uh, mention that many. Okay, now see, this is a method name, this is the uh, 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 same name of the class, okay, but here we are passing some parameters here, okay, here we can, pa uh, here we can pa pass two parameters, one parameter, three parameters, even say if you have a requirement to pass three parameters, yes, you can pass like this. Java fine. Say let me say string yes. Okay. Here I am passing one parameter only. But again that, that to string. Okay. Now see here. This is a default constructor. Okay. By default, even though you create it, you, uh, you don't create it, it is going to be created in the background. And this is a normal constructor. 
here for this constructor, I am passing two values here. Now everyone observe here, now observe here, uh, the interesting part is start here. So we have been creating this instance. Now I can create an uh, instance in this fashion also. A Java file. Okay. Basically this is the class name. Okay. Now we are redefining this uh, uh, example here. Let me say OEX1. New. Here we have to give the, uh, the constructor name here. Java file. And say I am passing a string value. Hi. Now everyone observe here, here I am creating instance, everyone observe here, I am creating instance, OX1 is the object and uh, here if you observe here, when I create this one, this Java file, if I pass this high, it is going to create the instance for this, okay, it is going to be uh, pass this high value to this, to this particular constructor, okay, now in a similar way, Java file, let me say ex2 new here the constructor name java file here I can pass say 3 comma 4 3 comma 5 ok now see here now here if I if I do this it's going to refer uh, while creating the instance it is going to refer uh, this one so what is the main use of this constructor Say while creating the instance itself, say you want to uh, you know you want to uh, create instance with some set of values. Okay, say for example here in the previous case, say here uh, you are uh, while calling this method you are passing the values right this a and b. Okay, probably what I can do here uh, even I can uh, write a method like this. But again, uh, see here. I am creating one method and here I am not going to pass this parameters. Okay. Now here uh, let me say a1 and this b1. Now see here uh, I am creating a inch a1 comma b1 here. Okay. Now here I am passing the values right. First of all, I am just defining some class variables and I am filling up with this class variables in the, in this instance a1 equal to a and b1 equal to b here. Okay. Now we created the instance variables and this instance variables will be filled up with this constructor. Okay. Now see here. Now we have addition, right? Now, uh, see here, here I am directly printing a1 plus b1 and how these values are going to be filled up? These values are going to be filled up from this constructor here. Okay. Now, let me comment this these lines. Now, after this, ox2, simply I am saying addition. Okay. Now, if you execute this, Uh, it, is, it is going to take some time. Uh, it seems a little bit slow. But in simple words, I know constructor means uh, it will have the, it, it may have this uh, it will have the same name of the class. Okay. If it does not contain any parameters and if it is like uh, within the empty, I can call it as a default constructor. And even though you create it, even you don't create it. It is going to be created by uh, by default in the background of the Java. Okay, simple. Uh, if you have a, uh, uh, you can have a, a constructor with some input parameters. If you have a parameters, you have a flexibility to while creating the instance itself. While creating the instance itself, I can pass parameters here. Okay, here I can pass the parameters while creating the instance itself. If you remember in yesterday's session in the calculator. Here, uh, uh, if you observe here, okay. 
Here, what we have done? We have passed these values, right? We have passed these values uh, uh, separately, input 1, input 2. Instead of this, if I would have write a, a, a constructor like this, So here observe here this input one here I can pass parameters like int a int b now here I'm filling up with this input one and input two here itself okay now here previously what I was doing I was uh, uh, I was uh, just creating this uh, this one right i was just pa passing these values here i have to create this public calculator yep see if i want to put this yes now here previously i had created an instance okay then uh, we are passing we are passing these values now instead of this what i can do here this one calculator or count new calculator and here I can pass six comma two simple okay now while creating the instance itself I am passing the values Previously, I was passing separately. I mean, because of this constructor, while creating the instance itself, we can fill up it. Okay. Um, the best way is like, uh, how can I say this? I say it's like, uh, while buying something itself, uh, you know, uh, how can I say? It, it's simple, you know, uh, while creating the instance itself, we are simply uh, passing some values here okay so this is called as a constructor okay now the other way of uh, uh, creating the instance is this if you go to this int logic the second way is same uh, same but here basically here even here later also it is uh, it is like this it's not like a class name here we have to say method name here i mean default constructor okay and here just constructor so it, it may have some parameters too so earlier we were creating the instance then we are filling up the values but now while creating the instance itself we can uh, fill up with the values okay now we'll try to understand uh, how to execute uh, uh, Java class. We have been uh, using public static void main, but if you remember, I said we will discuss it a bit later. Yep, here executing a Java class. Okay, so here uh, two ways. One is uh, using uh, this public static void main. Okay, by using this, basically uh, when you write a class, when you write a class, if you don't have the public static void main, okay, that will not be executed. Okay, why? Because uh, if you remember, I was using a word like Java runtime environment JRE for JRE to execute a particular class. Okay, JRE needs this public static void main. Whenever you are trying to execute a script, uh, this Java runtime environment will look for a main method. Here main is a method, okay, and uh, whose value, uh, it is going to return nothing, void means it is going to return nothing, and here uh, uh, static means the uh, uh, this cannot be uh, edited. I mean, we cannot uh, 
uh, we cannot change the main method outside okay public it's a public and moreover here if you see a string and alls it means we are passing uh, some uh, array of strings array of strings and moreover uh, generally uh, this will be used this string as generally we use uh, uh, you know uh, when we are executing our java class from a command prompt okay however we have to use this format if you want to execute a java class by default i mean uh, this is a natural way this is one of the traditional way of executing a java class okay we have to use public static void main why because whenever you want to execute a java class a java runtime environment will look for this main met main method okay a java runtime environment will try to execute the uh, execute the class from this main method okay it will not it will not bother about all these constructors and all these methods it, uh, it will not bother about all these things it is going to bother about this main method it will check java runtime environment will check for a main method so if you want to execute a java class we have to create this format public static void main with this format so that java runtime environment will start executing from here okay that is the reason i have been using public static void main okay this is one of the traditional way of executing a java class apart from this now we have something called annotations this is one of the way public static void main we have been using it okay so if you want to execute a java class what we have to use we have to use public static void main it is one of the traditional way the other way is we can use something called annotations okay uh, in recent days uh, we have some frameworks again uh, when i say framework means don't get confused uh, you know frameworks are available in automation or even in java okay now i am talking about the java framework i am not talking about the automation framework okay so here uh, java framework i am just giving introduction about java frameworks okay so here uh, framework means uh, it's a, again some set of methods and so some set of commands set of uh, commands okay for uh, uh, flexibility i mean flexibility uh, in terms of executing executing the scripts okay so here we have two types again two types of uh, java frameworks are there one is j unit if you remember uh, when we were ex exporting our uh, java class uh, from the selenium uh, when we were exporting a, a script from selenium ide there was a, a format like uh, java jnet4 web driver okay jnet is one of the framework testng is another framework okay and both the frameworks it might be jnet it might be testng it, it has containing some annotations there is a concept called annotation annotation means it's a kind of command okay it is a kind of command now everyone observe here now say for example uh, let me go with this let i have created this star class now we have a uh, move forward we have move backward right now everyone observe here and uh, i have been calling these these uh, methods here in the public uh, public static void main right right so if i want to execute this what i said uh, of course we yesterday we created uh, uh, the instance of this this uh, this car class in another uh, this one different car models okay now what i can do here uh here i can go to this car and see here let me minimize all these things now if i want to execute this particular uh, cl uh, car class we have uh, we can create a public static void main or everyone observe i'm simply using something called at the rate test okay this is called as annotation this is called as annotation so if i want to execute this move forward i can use this at the rate test here okay now if you uh, everyone observe here if you keep a line or uh, if you mention at the rate test it is uh, it is showing an error here just keep cursor on this now if you keep a cursor now it is showing some uh, related uh, files everyone observe org.jnet and uh, org.testng 
I think I did not explain about this inputs. So I will explain. See, here. it means uh, at, at the rate test is an annotation which is available in both JUnit as well as in TestNG. So which uh, which uh, which uh, at the rate test do you want to use? It is asking about that. Uh, do you want to use JUnit or do you want to use TestNG? Okay, both uh, the purpose will be same. But the thing is, uh, the um, its parent library is different. JNIT is one set of framework, TestNG is a different framework. So let me use the JNIT is it? Uh, JNIT over here. Where is this? So I have a direct test. Now here, I'm just if I want to execute this, right click here. Now go run as. Now if you close the other here, here it is showing JNIT. For example, if you don't have this, say if you go here, if you comment this, and if you right click on this, it will not show nothing. It will just show here. It is showing uh, test and the test. Why? Because uh, here uh, for this uh, Eclipse, I have configured test and However, just now we, we were trying to use this one, right? Let me call also. No. Here it is not showing a JNIT here. Now, if I uh, enable this, if I enable this, if you go run as it is showing JNIT. Okay, even in the earlier case, it was it used to show only run on server. Okay, but however, I can simply select this chain test. <coughs> what happened? Installation is Okay, this saying it should be public. Yep. As we are using uh, 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 JNIT framework, so it is expecting to have this uh, methods in public. Now see here. It has executed uh, these three. This is move forward null zero because we, we did not pass any value here. Okay, so it means I don't need to again uh, you know, create a job, public static void main. If I want to execute, I can make use of this annotations here. Okay, we have annotations, JNIT annotations, and uh, uh, test and annotations. And at the rate test is the key one. It is the main one. And apart from that, we have so many annotations. We have uh, at the rate before, at the rate after. Uh, as of now, see here, I'm just talking about this too. Okay, executing a Java class in two ways means here we have main method and we have annotations. Of course, we will get into the more details in, uh, in next session. Okay, here uh, we we have used public static void main. Okay, apart from that, I used at the rate test, and that at the rate test can be a JNIT or it can be a test ng. Okay, in both the cases, it is going to execute the particular methods. Now, if you want to execute multiple methods here, you can simply say as a test for multiple methods here. Okay. Can you see here? This is move forward, and uh, if you all agree here, it is saying this is start and uh, this is move forward. This is move backward. It means if you close the other here, it did not execute in sequence. First we have it has executed move forward, then it has executed start, then it executed move backward. Okay, so it is one of the uh, uh, problem in uh, JUnit testing. I mean JUnit uh, framework. Uh, the person who has developed JUnit framework, they had a perception that each and every method will be independent. Of course, here uh, it's kind of a uh, dependence in terms of testing. It is a kind of uh, 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 one method may be depend on the other one, but I uh, know basically these are the frameworks, the frameworks that I have been uh, talking about. The Java frameworks, basically these are the frameworks for the flexibility of the developers, for the flexibility of the developers for performing their unit testing. Okay, mainly these frameworks evolved for the purpose of developers. To perform unit test, unit testing. 
and the developer who has uh, developed this framework, this JNU framework, uh, that developer had a perception or a principle that each and every uh, uh, at the rate test method, the method where we use at the rate test, that method is independent of each other. I mean, one method is independent to other. Okay, that JNUT method, uh, JNUT in JNUT, the person who has developed this JNUT framework, uh, that uh, the person has that kind of uh, perception. I mean, uh, with that principle, uh, he has designed that framework. Okay, so here, simple uh, mainly this JNUT and test engine is for the purpose of the unit testing, and generally unit testing will be performed by the developers. Okay. But however, uh, you know, uh, we are also going to use as part of our Selenium automation, where sometimes we use JNIT and TestNG annotations, and there will be some set of methods. We use these things uh, uh, for, for uh, writing our logics. Okay. As of now, I just discussed uh, uh, how to execute a Java class by using public static void main, and the other is uh, annotation. Okay. Annotation and that to iterate test. Okay. Yep. Yeah. H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis: How we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training. Hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.